This is a production of the Triple Star Amusement Corporation. The roar of thousands of voices in unison can be heard through wider screens across the globe. Our name might have changed, but our commitment to excitement, thrill, and actual back action continues to be the same. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the newly recruited Combat Wrestling. And as always, it's your boy, Matt Manhuad, going the action shot by shot, move by move, and calling it down the middle as it should be. And on that subject, before we begin, um... Our festivities, there is something that I need to do, that I feel the need to do to you guys, and that is issue an apology. An apology for my personal behavior in our uh, latest mega event, Frenzy. I mean, I'm not apologizing for the forced language. I mean, it was a mega event, and we're allowed to use that. And especially, you cannot <laughs> that, uh, stop that. Terry Rufkin pulled diving down from the very top of the chaos chamber. They didn't call for it, right? <laughs> but what I mean exactly is my actions uh, towards certain superstars. You know, I allowed my emotions to flow my objectivity. And I decided to uh, take my fight out in two superstars. Uh, namely, the actions of General Saad and, you know, overall uh, current OD champion Cosmo Kramer. And for that, I apologize. And... I make no promises, but I will try from now on to be more partial, to be more objective and call it down the middle, as it should be. So, now that I got that out of the way, I think it's time for us to... Kneel before Zod! Oh, right. Completely forgot that he requested some air time. <laughs> The man of the hour right now, General Saad, whose actions have been questioned by many a uh, member of the CAW Cosmo in regards to his own participation, if we could call it that, in uh, the mega event frenzy and the things that he's done to our current newly crowned champion, uh, Cosmic Kirin, after a grueling match with the former champion, Yamasaki Ruji. And now General Saad is going for the mic, and it's time for us to listen to what he has to say. Let's do so, shall we?
Not that you want to think right now, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think Ruji Sama uh, liked the tone of voice that General Sun was using when mentioning his name. And uh, knowing him as well as I know him, and him being an OG of the now, uh, yeah, things are not going to look pretty in a minute for the general. But uh, it all depends on how this dialogue might improve, if there might be a dialogue. Let's see. Is it here? Oh, it's a life free from the hospital. All right, let's see what the champ has to say. For the general, he has to win tonight's main event, or he will not get a spot at any championship whatsoever as long as Osman Kirin is the champ. But if I know Yamazaki Ruiz as well as I think I know him, he will become the ultimate obstacle on the general's ambitions. Whoo, what a main event that's gonna turn out to be, huh, folks? But that will be then. This is now a tag team of four lovely things. Coming up, afternoon messages. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. See, we told you. We told you we'd be back. We told you we'd be back. <laughs> welcome back to Combat Wrestling Home. And what better way to start a festivity than with a high up high energy, high caliber tag man. Featuring the Dames Division. <laughs> Ladies first, am I right? The following tag team battle is ready for one fall. On the way to the ring, from the judgment six is the lady in the fan. Do Judgment 6, very own Metal Maiden, the almost literal iron fisted ruler of the Virtual Fighter Tournament, comes here to the battlefield of Canvas to test her skills and metal in tag team action with this dame as her tag partner. Our partnership MMTs, the captain is now here. Yar! Her partner from the seas of Sequin Land, Risky Boots. Sequin Land's wayward daughter, the purple hued ruler of the Tinker Bats, is now making her debut here on Combat Wrestling to show off her skills and abilities that have gained her the reputation as one of the most ruthless, most merciless of. Corsairs in the seventh sea. And while the rules of battle here are quite different than those in the ocean, there are very similarities. You know, as long as you don't get caught cheating and doing what pirates do, right? But it is time for her to prove that she is, in fact, 
the dangerous individual that everyone has claimed her to be. And what better way to do so than to tag along with an individual whose back that you never want to be on the side of, and let alone on the other end of her fists and kicks and anything else that she might use. Area Control Unit, the Guardian is now here. And opponent, from Ottawa, Canada, the Thunder Force, Dennis Crawford. One of the most unjustly unsung warriors of the 16 and 32 will be era. Makes her presence felt here on Combat Wrestling. And all I could do is wish her good luck. Her, along with her tag partner for tonight, with... My, 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 if it isn't one of the most iconic figures in all of fighting games of making her debut here on Combat Wrestling. And her tag team partner, from Kyoto, Japan, Mai Shiranui. The first lady of SNK Playmore and the Neo Geo, and overall one of the most important figures in all of fighting games done, making her presence felt here on Combat Wrestling. I don't paint of sounding like a chauvinist, what a presence it is, huh, folks? <laughs> and here she is to demonstrate the skills that have put her on that map, and now she's going to use them to get on this map, on the battlefield of Camden, here on Combat Wrestling for all of our entertainment. Let's wish her all the best of luck here. But then again, knowing her pedigree, she doesn't need luck. She's that good. The stage is set. The combatants are prepped. Referee are heading towards the rings in the bell. And the first match of the new era does begin. Ooh, nice counter by Senes Crawford into whatever running strike uh, the Rao had right there. Now Senes picks her up. Goes behind. And, uh, ooh, the activation by Doral, who takes control over on Senna's head. And a knee to the back for good measure. Now Doral goes behind that. Oh, I thought she was going for a German, but Senna's was not telegraphed. Now Doral with an arm wrench, wrenching the arm of Senna's. So for the run, the see? And she does it like, what, three, four, five times? Three to move, so win. <laughs> now she goes behind. You continue the arm wrench, continue the pressure right there. And you know, that's all, there's always a strategy there. Ooh, nice punch, and ooh, nice evasion by uh, Senes Crawford into that knee to the face. Now Senes picks the roll up, and tosses her to her corner, and are we going to see attack? Yes, folks, she attacks to the lovely yet lethal by Shiranui. And we go for a, who the runner? Oh, <laughs> and a power bomb. I think I've seen the Night Warriors do that a couple of times before. <laughs> oh, the roll manages to make some separation from herself and Mai. Now she mounts Mai, and ooh, punches through the facial features of the lovely Mai Shiranui. Rearranging them as much as she can with those fists of almost literal steel there. And a field goal! And a, oh, I'm alive! <laughs> I'm alive! Makes his triumphant return to the CAWC courtesy of Combat Wrestling. <laughs> Ooh, nice kick by uh, the route to my shit annoying to make some separation there. Now my. Oh, it's Sugiri right there to the upper back of the route. Now. My dragging uh, the route to her corner. Senes gets in after the tag. And, oh, more fist, more feet to the back for good measure. Oh, and the route retaliates with that um, back body drop. And a double counter there by Senes with that nasty clothesline. Now Senes wrenching the arm yet again. And, oh, no. Oh, is this what it, Oh, yes, it was. Oh, the, <laughs> that, that always makes me cringe because. There's such a, a possibility of this location with that. <laughs> oh, now the round showing her still resolving. Oh, Commander Crawford, that was a big mistake taunting like that while the round was so close. And now you see why with all, due to all of that head wrenching. Now the round continuing the pressure, bringing her to um, her corner. And for the first time in the match, 
Captain Risky Boots is in the uh, contention. Ooh, and now she gets a uh, rose line, courtesy of uh, Commander Crawford, who proceeds to toss uh, Captain Boots into her corner. Risky Boots is going to bail out of there, but she gets uh, met with a flat jab. Commander Crawford keeping on the offensive, but I think Captain Boots had enough. Now Risky gonna try to go for a <laughs> suplex or something, but that gets ejected and counter into a new test breath. That's <laughs> all school as it is effective. Now, Sen is picking up Risky and Risky trips her down. And, oh, nice! At the nick of time, she tags so much, you know, it was coming into a hunt of fire with crap kick all over the place. Now, my picks up on uh, Risky, but Risky counters with that, ooh, on Rich Lariat. Now, Risky dragging her center of the ring. And she goes, oh, feet to the stomach. I don't care how lean you are. You're still going to hurt your opponent with that. Oh, got her nice with that on right there. Actually, no, that's, not, that's, well, that's just a straight up, um, that's just a straight up Isuna drop. I'm sorry. Now, Risky grabbing my, oh, spear right to the third buckle. <laughs> that one I called right, didn't I? Now, Oh, Polish hammer from Risky Boots to Major I know it. Oh, oh, those educated little feet of Captain Risky Boots. Right to the facial features of oh, Major Inouye. And oh, boy. Little gentlemen, as you know, that's a tradition here from the wrestling. This is my water break. Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> That was some good high quality H2O right there. Now, where were we? Oh, oh yeah, right, the match. Ooh, nice drop kick by um, Dorao right there. Who proceeds to pin my? And it was a what? No, no pin. No pinning going on now. Now, Dorao trying to go for uh, that spinning roundhouse, but oh, my read that telegram and, and the counter with that dragon screw or leg lift. Now, my picking up Dorao. Now, she tosses Dorao into her corner, and is she going to tag on? Uh, Oh, that was not gonna happen. At least not by the Ross, um viewpoint. Now the Ross does it to her corner. And now the Ross tags on to Risky Boots and they're both gonna do some kind of tag movement. Oh, two woman back body drop. And that's the hers, let me tell you. Now, <laughs> Risky Boots goes behind uh, Maya. Oh, German with a bridge. And it was a one. Only to the count of one. Risky is getting right here. Ruthless a little, like I said before, but oh, Maya is getting crafty now. And she's not gonna take much more, I think. Now she touches it to her corner hard, and that will not do your spine any favors. Oh, are we gonna see it? Are we gonna see it? Are we gonna see it? Shino Hipachi! Shino Hipachi hits hard! There we go! One, two, and four! It's gonna come to the German two, two, two! Now Maya picks her up! Comes right through a corner, and oh boy, <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, sit me down because it's getting a little too exciting. I don't know you. <laughs> oh man, a little more water for my throat. <clears throat> and Sen is coming down like a lightning bolt right there. Into the body features of <laughs> Captain Risky Boots, and now she's gonna go for the pin. One, nope, only to the count of one. Showing that resilience, that seven seas resiliency there. Captain Boots is now Risky hits a uh, center scrapper in the in the stomach, tosses her to her corner, and oh boy, I think I know this maneuver a little quite well. Yes, folks. Oh, sliding to a double drop kick from the apron. So now the referee counting, and the last thing these two say is need, these two tags is needed a disqualification, am I right? Now continuing the pressure of Captain Boots is from the outside. Oh, I think she was gonna go for another back body dropper. Oh, flapjack to that silly pad of floor. <laughs> and it must hurt um Captain Boots even more being a lady, you know, her breasts and all. And another one! Oh my jeez. And let me tell you, there's not that much padding in that floor. I'm letting you know from, from the get-go. And, oh, Commander Crawford tosses a uh, risky boot into the corner. 
Now, oh, touches her to the LED and climbs in before the count gets in. And now, uh, Risky Boots back to Rao. And the Rao also firing here, punching and punching and punching some more into the, into the mid torso of Commander Crawford. And she goes for that slide as well. And oh, a slight, I mean, frontal tackle right there from the Rao through us. And it's Crawford. I think that's what she wanted to do from there early going. Oh, that roundhouse, that lethal, nasty roundhouse. And I think Commander Crawford had enough. She just hits her with an arm wrench, twists her to her corner. And now, <coughs> oh boy. Even though this is not risky boots, but she's still going to do it. Because if it were to uh, Captain, oh, even worse. That's a CDT close to close. That's even worse, folks. Because I know that thinly part of Flora you was mentioning earlier. <laughs> Oh, and a double drop and a spinning drop kick, but that suddenly girl got red. And so did that kick in, and he got countered into the dragon through leg whip. And I cannot stress enough how thinly the floor that is. And oh, 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 Russian leg sweep into that. Oh, man. These ladies are just wanting to destroy each other. And mind you, this is just the first, the first match. You can only imagine what the rest of the show might be like, huh? <laughs> Oh, and look at, look at Captain Boot. Look at her play dirty. Look at her play dirty. Now, oh, oh, boy. Oh, are we going to see it? Are we going to see it? J6 juggle. J6 juggle connects full in there. Now she's going to go for a pin. Are we going to go? One, two. And oh, only to the count of two, despite the great assistance by Captain Boot. Only to the count of two, ladies and gentlemen. Two through there, two. Now... The round tosses Sennis Crawford into the corner, but that gets a jet Oh, nice terminus on neck breaker there by uh, Commander Sennis Crawford, who picks the round line. Oh, the round retaliates with that back body draw. <laughs> and uh, Sennis was trying to go to catch a powder, I think. Oh, and we're going to see it. We're going to see it. Judgment sword. Pow, driver right there. Pow, God. We go with one, two, and oh. Oh, some assistance by Captain Risky Boots. Making sure that their team doesn't get that loss right there. Now, Doral, I think you're going to do it again. Are we going to do it again? Are we going to see it again? I think we are. Perhaps? No, no. He gets countered to a, a full flesh body drop right there by Doral. Doral, oh, and Doral Retaliates with a, a finisher of a road. Here we go. Just J6 juggle! J6 juggle! And Commander Crawford was gonna try to escape in to take a powder, but Dural intercepted there. Now Dural tosses her to her corner. And now Dural just tosses it to the outside. Is she gonna escape the receipt back? Yes, she is! Double drop kick to, double drop kick to the apron. Man, I'm so excited I can barely talk. <laughs> Now the round picks up on um, Sennis. The round, oh boy, this is not gonna go well. Oh, but Sennis <laughs> read that telegram and get herself off that predicament. Punch to the face of the round, and the round tries to go for another one. Her own, oh, shuffle kick into the stomach for her trouble. Now these two are going all at it, it's outside. And, oh, facial features of Dennis Crawford meet the side of the apron there, courtesy of the round. Who goes for another, sh oh, even worse, that's the knee right through the lower of the back. That hurts like you don't want to know. And some of them punch you for good measure. And Dural is going full on offense. And referee are heading to the Caranayan. Oh, no. Come on, don't tell me this is how we're going to start a new era. I guess we are, folks. The first match of the new era ends in a count out. I mean, sure, <clears throat> you might say a win is a win. It's not a pin, it's not a disqualification, it's not a submission. It's a, a win is a win, but come on. Oh, well, I guess congratulations go in order to the winners of this match. But congratulations go overall to all, to all four um, Danes in this contention because they pulled an amazing match. Just too bad that it ended the way it ended, but... Ah, Beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners. Dural and Risky. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't go anywhere. We got more excitement through the action. On this 
the first episode of the new era of Combat Wrestling. And it looks like their little brawl has spilled from back there into here into the arena. And uh, yeah, I know I'm gonna sound like I'm um, breaking the guarantee that I made earlier, but I gotta say this, you know, Wendy, Wendy stepped out of line when he when she said those things. I mean, that was a nice. However, credit gotta be given here that Alicia just drew for his blood, and uh, man, I wonder how this is gonna pan out later on. Uh, and another one that's gonna be really exciting is what's coming out next after this message is not going anywhere. We'll be right back. And we're back, folks. And what is this feeling of impending darkness I sense all of a sudden? Perhaps I should ask that man coming down the aisle. After all, he is the living shadow. The eyeless doom dealer. El verdugo de Segovia. The guild master himself. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. On the way to the ring, from Segovia, Spain, Zato, one. The dark-minded one, the supreme leader of the guild, one of the most influential and dangerous individuals in the entirety of the Guilty Gear universe, is now here making his grand debut on Combat Wrestling. Will he be able to manipulate, dominate, and overall cause chaos as he has done in his own mother franchise? Only time will tell, I believe. And what better way to prove his skill than with his competitor tonight?
Ladies and gentlemen, that glorious hymn can only mean one thing. The glorious Sapphires, the savior of a hundred kingdoms, is making his presence fair and his debut here on Combat Wrestling. His opponent from the line of survivors at Nine Horn, the Rocket Knight, Sportster. Yet another legend of the BDD world. Bringing his tool set and showing his skills here on the battlefield canvas for all to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set. The combatants are prepped. Uh, referee Henny Sosa calls for the bell, and this one is on the way. Oh, great running spin kick by um, Sparkster to uh, Sato to begin this match. And Sato retaliates with a oh, <laughs> shin breaker right there. That always hurt. And he's going for a camel clutch, I think. No, that's if just as bad, landing the hit into the lower back of Sparkster. Now, Sato are dragging Sparkster, and isn't it a little too early to start doing this? Yeah, I, th I thought so too. Sato still in the offensive. Ooh, counter by Sparkster into a punch to the face. And a drop kick for good measure. Now Sparkster continuing the pressure. Picking up um, Sato and Sato with Alias with an arm break and a close line. As basic as it is effective. Now Sparkster gets behind it. Uh-oh. Huracarana! <laughs> Ooh, the acrobatic skills of Sparkster can never be denied, nor can be the malice of Sato Ichi as demonstrated by that um, fireman's uh, dropout. Drop down, I mean. My bad. Now he's wrenching the head, trying to decapitate him. How is this? How is this move still legal? I I wonder. Now he's going for another attempted pin. Way too early. It's getting a little too cocky, Sato. Um, Sato won, I believe. Now, ooh, Sparkster takes him down. Now, ooh, drops the the foot to the face. And wh another one. Oh, right to the elbow. That will do some damage. Yes. <laughs> as would that um, arm wrench clothesline by Sato and <laughs> the returning the favor with a <laughs> with an elbow and stomp for good measure now Sato with a oh dragon leg with dragon screw leg with my back now oh nice uh, um counter by uh Sparkster who proceeds to go for the oh are we gonna see it are we gonna see it rock a ricochet rock a ricochet is he gonna finish it uh Yes, Parkster, yes, no, maybe so. Well, as much of a party pooper as this may sound to be, that might cost him. There you go. Letting letting Satoichi rest like that, that was never a great idea. But then again, it's a, big, a rookie mistake, I guess. So now, Sparkster dragging Sato, oh, face first into the turn box. Now he tosses it around, and, oh, we're going to see some coast to coast thing going here on the apron. Get a flip up, lift up, and oh, DDT on the friendly pad of floor. All I know is that as long as we don't end this in a counter like like the first match, I'll be good. Now they're just beating each other down over there in the, in the outside the apron. Now they go back in, and oh, nice off counter. Oh, spinning up elbow shot by um, Satoichi right there. He will one, two, oh, only for the counter two, ladies and two, two, the two. At least this time he almost had it done at all. Oh, what is he planning? He's going aerial. Oh, did I mention that Satoichi can be very, very um, athletic and acrobatic when he wants to be as well? And as an example of that was that crossbody drop. Perfectly executed. And now he's just taunting. He's just <laughs> taunting Sparkster there. And ooh, he might have regret that with that drop kick there. And that football good measure. Now he's going to put a single leg combo clutch. Is Sato going to tap? Is Sato going to tap? Is he going to tap? I guess not. Now Sato continuing the pressure there on Sparkster. Going to try to drag him somewhere to the ropes, I guess. And, oh, and now Sato fighting desperately. Knowing what's <laughs> knowing exactly what could the, the, the uh, outcome be. But it makes nothing. Oh, look at it. Doesn't like a rattle into the turnbuckle. <laughs> and now Sato, oh, get to me, may pay for it with that uh, face buster. 
Now Spoxovic to open. No, that's a little too much for him. And oh, nice evasion there. Oh, but that didn't cut. That didn't do much. Now Sato dragging, finally getting all him in, into the corner. Oh, are we gonna see it? Are we gonna see it? He jumps into it. La Magnifica! La Magnifica College right there! That's his finisher! Is this over? Is this over? One! Two! And, oh! Two and a half right there, Lejima. Two and a half! But he had him. He had him. You cannot say anything. He almost had Sparks over that. And, ooh, Sparks are sandbagging there. Nice! But Tatoichi continuing the pressure. Now. I think he's gonna try to do it again. Is he gonna be able to manage it again? Here we go. Oh, a second Magnifica. <laughs> I guess Sato Spider is taking him seriously. We're one, two, and oh, the resiliency of Sparkster is without bounds. And no one can doubt it either. But Satoichi taking him seriously now, which should have been from the get go. And oh, Sparkster retaliate. Oh, as he catches him with a closer to the outside. And oh, I think he was, oh, I thought he was, um, <laughs> I thought he was tired and um, taking a powder. No, he's awesome. He's gathering um, the crowd to his size, Buckster is. Pulling onto the uh, crowd. And <laughs> he goes outside to continue the pressure. And this is exactly why he shouldn't have taken so long. Because uh, Refresh Sato is a dangerous Sato. <laughs> nice ejection there. Now both of, the, both of the contestants back in the ring. Now Sato, is, go is he going to go for a third magnificent perhaps? I believe he might. Here we go. Does it to the oh and a third magnificent out the night. That's three almost in a row right there. Right? He go one, two, and yo oh, no! I could have sworn that that would have been it for the rocket night. Three in a row. And he's still getting up. You have got to give all kinds of props to Sparkster for the resiliency and endurance. For Sato Ichi, you also gotta give him credit for being so, oh, so incredibly offensive. Right there, Sato picks up all Buster, but oh, that gets ejected with a kick to the midsection. And oh, Face Buster. Oh, and now I think he's gonna be mad because Sato Ichi does not like seeing his own blood, I'm telling you. And oh, are we gonna do it? Are we gonna do it? Oh, the first burst. The first burst on that right there. And is this going to be it? One, two, and woo, two, and nine heads. <laughs> How close was that? And he's going to try it again. I believe he's going to try it again. Here we go. Oh, knees up. Sato had the knees up. This could be the turning point of the match, ladies and gentlemen. Sato continued the pressure. Oh, nice ejection by um, Foxer there. And now, oh, <laughs> Perhaps uh, the fourth Magnifica tonight, most likely. Here we go. Tosses him. Tosses him. No, that was just a uh, feel of fear. His signature maneuver, feel of fear. But with that done, you know that um, La Magnifica would not be far behind. He got him on the ropes and, oh, I think he read that telegram <laughs> way too many a time. He's going to try to go for something else. Oh, power bar. There we go. One, two. Oh, how close was that? You have got to love this back and forth, ladies and gentlemen. And now, uh, Fox are rallying the crowd to his side. And now we're going to see another um, uh, Sapphire's burst. Are we going to see it? Oh, and this time it's uninterrupted with all oh, four four connections. This is going to be the end of the match. One, two, and it is. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Sparkster. Oh, his very first victory here on Cooper Wrestling. Although millions of props have to be given to Sato because originally he started to get cocky, but then he decided to take Foxer far more seriously and took him to a limit that I don't think he have ever been to. Sato Ichi is poised to be another legend here on Combat Wrestling. But right now, all the congratulations go to Sparkster for a glorious debut. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your winner, The Rocket Knight, Sparks!
next star. Yes, folks. Congratulations go to him. All the kudos in the world for his great win. After all, it was a grueling match, and he pulled out on top. He is going to be... What the hell? Are we pulling an SEA double? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, he's here! He's here! The Lord of Dark Oblivion! And, oh! and he has been the unfortunate to be his first victim. Oh, no. Don't do it, Uncle. Please, Uncle. Don't do it. No. Not like this. Oh, oh the mighty God! And it is here, ladies and gentlemen. The Dark One is here. Folks, I'm winning out of, out of, out of toys, out of friends, out of everything. We have got to go to a commercial. Oh my effing gosh, he is here. Behold his mighty name and fear it. He is oh Lord. We are going to go right back. I'm not going to need a change of pants too. <laughs> Can we get some audio back there? No? Well, those two are definitely planning something. We'll be right back after this, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. And we're back to combat wrestling, folks. And the reigning defending tag core champions, the FFO, have taken to the mic. Let's hear what they have to say, shall we? <laughs> Talk about some professional great party crashing here, huh? <laughs> Wait, does this mean that the Nintendo Order are cashing in chips now that the Night Warriors are not claiming the rematch clause? Sure sounds like it. Doesn't it suck when circumstances force you to leave things ambiguous? I know they do. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, one thing that is not ambiguous is that we're going to have a lovely Lethal Dance match coming up after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. to combat wrestling. And one of the most controversial figures in the video game world makes her debut here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring. Residing in Metro City, Roxy. As I mentioned just now, I'm pain of being redundant and I'm kind of doing that a little too much tonight, ain't I? <laughs> so, uh, this lady is very, very controversial. Not just for her association with her more famous um, 
sister poison but because she herself is quite the individual you know she is as insanely beautiful as she is downright insane and <laughs> i have heard various things about her let's see how she fares tonight against this pain coming up And those combat wrestling welcomes Vice City's other most famous residents, besides Tommy Rochetti and Victor Vance. And her opponent, from Vice City, Florida, she is the surf proclaimed BBW baddest babe in the world, Candy. From her lowly beginnings in dive bars and strip clubs, she has risen to the top by guile and skill. Sniper-like precision, a steel-like result that very few have shown. And tonight she aims to use those skills and that guile in her debut on combat wrestling to prove that she is in fact worthy of being here, worthy of being called the baddest babe in the world. The one and forever true B B. W. But will she able to manage that? Let's find out in a few seconds, shall we, folks? In the meantime, let's just enjoy the little um, introduction she's giving us, right? Hey. The audience is hungry for action. The dates are ready to deliver. Referee Aheni Sosa calls for the bell, and this one is on the way. Let's get this started. As you can see right there, oh, Roxy wasting absolutely no time going on, on the offensive, being aggressive from the get-go. A couple of stumps to Candy, and <laughs> more stumps, and oh, nice retaliation into that uh, single leg drop kick there by Candy Sauce. Now, oh, now Roxy pays her back with that diving lariat. And oh, back body drop by Candy sucks to Roxy right there. And a couple of stumps with good measure. Now she raises her arm. Oh, the lovely hips of Candy sucks landing on the equally lovely arm of Roxy there. Now drags her to the center of the ring. And here we go. One. I think it was a little too soon to do that, I guess. But that's just me. Now she's going to try to go for a suplex. Oh, I think Roxy read that telegram. Reggie the arm and oh, white leg sweep, showing you that even uh, <laughs> a, car a famous character from Beat em Up can do one of those. Uh, not too many you see from uh, Face vs. Steel. <laughs> oh, nice um, vertical suplex there by uh, Candy Sock. And oh, smack across the. Oh, and now, oh, Candy makes her pay with that D D T from the B B W. <laughs> now, a couple of stumps from uh, Candy Sock and. She again reaches the arm and again dives the hip into the uh, shoulder of Roxy. And Roxy retaliates with a spinning firearm on takedown. And some stupid... Oh, right in the elbow. Oh, right in the elbow joint. That must hurt like you don't want to know. And she gets a punch by Candy for her trouble. Hey, Candy blows her a kiss. And now Candy goes for an alley you bomb. And that, trust me, that hurts. Now Candy picking up Roxy. Now to the to the turnbuckle. And she goes, there. oh, she was going for a knee shot, but that fell miserably. And leaves her open for uh, that diving Larry from Roxy, who proceeds to pin her and to no avail. Now Roxy, another stomp for the back of the head. And now she's going to go for a triangle choke. And she ends it up with an elbow just to add to the pain. And oh, he'll go to the lower back of Candy right there. Now Roxy picks Candy. He goes that merit. Oh, here we go. Oh, skull cross. Skull cross connects right there. And here we go. This is this gonna be it. One, two. No, only two. The count of one. I was the one who went a little too far ahead. I apologize for that, folks. Now Roxy picking up Candy and Candy retaliates with that uh, melee fireman takedown. And now she's gonna drag her to the uh, ropes and hot shot, hot shot. Yep, that will not do Roxy's uh, throw any favors whatsoever. Now Candy Sucks tosses Roxy into the corner. Now she turns around and <laughs> she goes for some kicks and oh boy. I think I know what's gonna happen here. I've seen it one too many times. Let's call it, shall we? 
the true double drop kick to the apron right there. And trust me, Candy's heels on your skull does have to hurt like you don't want to know. And now Candy trying to go for aerial and oh, that diving knee felt miserably. And wait, no, don't do it, Roxy. You might get disqualified. You don't want that. Oh, and she thought better of it. Now Roxy robbing all Candy. Oh, nice neck breaker. Basic as it is effective, and oh boy, I think we're gonna see it. Are we gonna see it? I'm gonna see it. Oh, she was gonna go for the uh, for the Metro City uh, madness, but Candy starts to evade. <laughs> and she tries to go for a springboard on uh, Dive her own, but she also misses. And now she's gonna go again. Is she gonna do it? Right. Oh, again, she misses the Metro City madness, and. Oh, pop driver by Candy sucks for her trouble. And now Candy's gonna try to go for her own. Is she gonna do it? Is she gonna do it? Got her um, on the shoulder then. Oh, Vice City B. Hits and connects fully on the facial features of Roxy. And here we go, one, two, and three. Let it give it that three. Candy sucks win in her debut here at Combat Wrestling. I apologize for the burping, but I'm too excited to um, stop the calling. And while I'm not the subject of, I want to give serious congratulations to both ladies for putting one hell of a clinic tonight. Roxy going for an offensive from the get-go from minute one. But in the end, it was Candy Sock that picked up the victory. The first of her career and perhaps the first of many here of combat wrestling. Serious kudos to the BBW from Vice City. Although, to be honest, nothing can be taken off from Roxy from delivering an equally great performance on tonight's show on her first match here on Combat Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your winner, Candy Sucks. I truly hope you guys and gals are enjoying watching this show as much as we are enjoying making it for you because like we said before without you there's no caw and will you look at that a true show of sportsmanship by the by city big city well oh well not everybody's gonna be cooperative candy might as well get used to it anyway go ahead and bask in the glory of your wait a minute what's roxy doing what why is she picking up the, the cat no roxy don't do this no come on you don't have to oh my god no Oh, loser, are you, man? Nah, look at that. Make me sick. That's just not called for. I'm sorry, Buzzo. You gotta admit. Make me sick. Make me sick. Another bombshell right there, folks. I really hope he didn't approve it. And we're back, folks, to come 
and wrestling. And lo and behold, our current reigning defending social media champion, Mitch Galloway, is here. And I'm willing to bet he's here to we'll talk about his win at the KS Gender at our first mega event, Let's see, after pulling one of the absolute most insane stunts we've seen yet in this business and in this uh, show alone. So, and I think he's going to talk about the future of the belt itself. Now that you come over here, he's asking for a mic. Let's listen what Mike has to say, shall we? Let's Oh, wait a minute. I guess the FFO wants to make its presence felt once again, and I think I know which one of its members is making its way to the ramp right now. Oh, lo and behold, yes it is, Little Caesar, the guy who got beat. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say it's that bluntly, but that's what happened. He got beat on that Chaos Chamber after he got landed that massive bear on him. And I think he wants to talk about uh, his participation in the upcoming Fight Man Battle Royal, or maybe something else, I don't know. The champ laying down the law. The law instituted by you, the social media community, i.e. the CAW Cosmo. And I guess we're going to have a nice action-packed action set fight man battle royal to determine the number one contender for the social media championship. That will be after these messages. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. you went and got some snacks and done your um, physiological need because we are back and this match is gonna be long. <laughs> Welcome back to Combat Wrestling. And the match to determine the number one contender for the social media championship on our next mega event begins now. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a five-man battle royal. On the way to the ring, the first participant from Manitoba, Canada, Rat Bang. The Contra veteran who made his presence felt in his debut on our last mega event, Princey, inside the confines of the chaos chamber, the unforgiving unrelenting ruthless chaos chamber is trying yet again to vie for the spot at the social media championship in this time in a more straightforward fight man battle royal and his accent to the top is gonna be a steep one because he has other people to contend including this gentleman right here i guess he decided to take the champ step by huh good on him i guess And his opponent, 
from Detroit, Michigan, representing the FFO bus foot organization, Little Caesar. I'm not gonna knock it, he's somewhat right. He's the man who stayed there with Teddy on the chaos chamber, but in the end, he lost, Teddy won. And the only way for him to get back is to beat these other people, including this gentleman right here. Hoi, chummers! Set your cyber decks, we about to hit the geometric there again. But the one thing I could say is that, yet again, this is not gonna be any no sweat for this guy. So, he better bring his A game today. Then again, he always does. I'm quite sure he's aiming to jack in hard and score that victory and swag it in. But these guys that he's gonna meet, they're tougher than any IC that he's ever been against. I can tell you that. And their opponent, from Seattle, Washington, Jake, the Shadowrunner, Armitage. He's already proven that he got all the tools to succeed here on Combat Wrestling as shown in his uh, performance in the Chaos Chamber. And by tools, I'm not talking about his cyber, day, uh, his cyber deck or his data jack or any of that thing. I'm talking about his skills, raw or mitigated wrestling skills. But... There's also uh, other participants in this contention that want the gold as much as he does. Will he be able to uh, defeat them all or will he be another one to get kicked out of the contention? Let's find out as the match goes on. And now we have, uh, what, two more people? Yes, I guess so. Why, oh why, that screen always gets my heart thumping whenever I see it. I guess that's why they call it a jump scare, huh, folks? Beloved um, ring announcer on those ringers. Whoa, whoa there, Freddy. Hey, eat down. I need my facial plate as much as the next guy, you know. As I was saying, I think that was kind of rude from our beloved um, ring announcer of Ringer Maggie Simpson to interrupt him in the middle of singing, but he needed to his name to be called. It's part of the protocol. Now, let's see if he can be the one who can make it, or he also gets kicked out of this contendership fight, man, Royal. Behold, the final participant in this five-man battle royal to the tournament contendership of the social media championship. The terror of Neo Tokyo himself is here. And their opponent from Neo Tokyo, Tetsu Shima. I remembered back in the chaos chamber at Francis how right he proved me um, how dangerous he truly can be when he did all those things in there. When he put life and limb, both his own and that of his opponent, in serious jeopardy only to try to obtain that prize possession. Sure, he did come up short, but in the end he did demonstrate what makes him so dangerous, so feared 
in the CAW Cosmo. And now he's gonna try yet again, this time, to get a, a chance at contendership for the prize possession, the social media championship here on Combat Wrestling. Will he succeed? The five combatants are set to go. The bell is ready to be wrong. This match is on the way. Let's get this one started. And ladies and gentlemen of the CAW Cosmos, I'm going to apologize in advance because with all this action-packed action going on at once in the, in the ring, it's going to be super, super hard for me to call all of it. But I'll do my absolute best just for you to understand what's going on. And as the numbers get thinner, I'll be able to call the action and the thrills as they go. But for now, please, I, uh, please excuse me <laughs> if I'm a little um, flustered from all the action-packed action going on. And just as I say that, all of a sudden, yeah, quite predictably, the action spills outside of the ring. That's what gets us back into the ring. And oh, nasty uh, Roger Lexi right there by Jake Armitage to uh, Freddie Fazbear. Even a Master Shadow Runner can do one of those, huh? Timmy dangerously. <laughs> I'm gonna be referencing you a lot this time. <laughs> On the other end, we have uh, Tetsushima, uh, Brad Fang, and Little Caesar having a little debate at their home. Now, Little Caesar picks up a Brad Fang, and oh, and Tetsu's just going willy nilly all over the place. <laughs> oh, nasty um, vertical triplet there by uh, Jake Armitage to Brad Fang, and Brad Fang. He's trying to make him pay for it. Oh, nasty shot to the other end. And another one. A right hand with everything right across um, Jake's face right there. Meanwhile, Brad Fang turns his little Cecil back into the ring. And Tetsu follows suit. Now, Fang turns his little Cecil to the corner. And he was planning on doing something, but Tetsu interrupted that badly. And Brad's going to make him pay for it by turning it to the other corner. And oh boy. Are we gonna see a Jake about to go? Oh, shot, go, run, and bam! Coast to coast from apron to barricade. Dropping the leg on Freddy Fazbear's back right there. Good thing he's a big bear, otherwise he's gonna, it was gonna hurt a lot more than it would actually hurt right now. Is that a, oh, I thought he was gonna go for a, for a freaking, um, follow his lamb, uh, Jake Armitage, but he actually ran his back into the apron net. That was just as bad, especially when it's wood and um, polymer. That is pain beyond pain. Right now, in the meantime, we got Tetsu hitting everybody on the other side of the ring. This, and now both Little Caesar and um, Brad Fat trying to make him pay. Ooh, nice knee to the gut by Little Caesar to Tetsu. And he tried to do one to the face of Brad Fat, but I failed miserably. In the other end, inside the ring, you wind up and punch. Throw Jake Armitage right there to Little C. I mean to Freddy Fazbear. I'm sorry. Oh crap! Are we gonna see it? Are we going to see it? Yes, we are, folks. The Jackal. The Jackal connects from Jake Armitage to Freddy Fazbear. One, two, oh, ladies and gentlemen, two to the count of two. And everybody in this contention is still in the contention. Redundancy. Thy name is Batman One. <laughs> now. That's so big enough for Little Caesar with evil intention. Oh, chop through the chest. Woo! <laughs> with all due pertinent apologies to the great Ric Flair, of course. And his daughter Charlotte. Now Brad picking up Little Caesar. And what is Tetsu's deal, man? I know he wants to catch himself by himself, but don't he believe that, you know, he should ex expand less energy? Just saying. Oh, speaking of energy, a conception right there with that um. Nasty suplex on that thinly padded floor to Brad Fang, and Brad Fang retaliates with that nearly fireman takedown. Meanwhile, back on the ring, oh, final 87, final 87, is that it? One, two, whoa, 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 Freddy Fazbear almost had Jake Armitage with the final 87, and oh, he's going to turn it over again, he's going to turn it over again, oh, but he gets ejected. <laughs> I guess Jake uh, was able to reach the cypher glam right there. <laughs> now he punches him, and I'm more punches from Jake Armitage to Freddy Fazbear there. Now he picks him up, and oh, smacked him, and I think we're going to see it again. 
Jack out! Jack out! This time taking away the, the oil. <laughs> Freddy Fazbear is off. Fisher, Fisher, there we go. One, two. And this time, Freddy Fazbear gets kicked out of the sensation courtesy of Jake Armitage. Now, Tetsu and uh, Little Caesar continuing their battle. Ooh, nice shot from um, Nice shot from Brad Fang to Jake. <laughs> Jake saw that. Brad Fang was ready to do his thing and he just fell the hell out. Oh, right there, the hard score. Actually, no, that's the Beast Cannon. Beast Cannon connects right there. <laughs> Tetsu did not want any of that. Tetsu did not want any of what would happen soon after. Now, Little Caesar's gonna try to do his. Oh, well, miserably. Courtesy of that dragon screw um, leg with by Brad Fang. Uh oh. Fang saying that, that he's got a prep. Fang has a prep. Oh boy, this is gonna be sweet. Oh, this is gonna be sick. Oh, the competition. And that's not gonna do Little Caesar's ample jaw, nor his even more ample chin. Any favors whatsoever. Oh, I think Brad Fang was gonna go for hardcore, but that got, that got interrupted by Jake Armitage there. Man, I'm running out of breath just calling out all these action packed action. You can tell by my voice, can't you? <laughs> and the fact that I just finished eating before <laughs> this match came in, that was a big mistake, I think. Here we go. Oh, Suplex with Paul. Oh, I thought he was gonna bridge it. Little Caesar, but no, he didn't. Now he picks up Jake Armitage. Now he's gonna do that. Oh, backbreaker, and uh, and um, and he pulls him down just to increase the pain. And then he changes target to a uh, Brat Fang, and continues that punishment. But Brat Fang takes that off. And oh, but well, that didn't last. Oh, are we gonna see it? Are we gonna see it? Pizza, 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 pizza hits hard on the cranial features of Brat Fang. And now Tetsu. Taking advantage that uh, Little Caesar took his eyes off of him. And, oh, that's the headbutt right there. And Ura, standing Uranagi to uh, Brad Fang. And Brad Fang is no small fry. One, two. Oh, two to the town of two. Like I was saying. Oh, he got him. He got him. He's going to tap. He got him with the Akira effect. This one got him with the Akira effect. And Jake Orange just tapped out. Jake tapped out to the Akira effect. Now that makes two people out of this contention. And only three people are left to contend for the social media championship. Failed by Ted Rubskin. And Tetsu almost had Brad Fang out of the contention too, but that didn't happen. Now, all three of these guys. And now, ooh! Nice on uh, will punch right there. Oh, little Caesar retaliates there. Oh, kicked him out. Of oh, we're going to see it again. Is he going to do it again? I guess so. Pizza, pizza. Pizza, pizza hard on the cranium on Brad Fang. Here we go. One, two. And yes, folks, little Caesar has eliminated Brad Fang. And now it's just set him and Tetsushima. Ooh, spin roller right there. And he thinks he's got this one in the bag. Don't get so trusty you saw ahead of time, Caesar. I'm just saying. Now he's going for some five moves to do, I think. Oh, go out to the corner and oh, elbow to the to the face and face buster. From little Caesar to Tetsu. Now he picks him up and he's gonna do that backbreaker and press down to increase that pain through the middle and lower back. Even I'm feeling it right now. And I think he's feeling the the glory of victory, but it might be a little too early, Caesar, so you better watch out. Now Caesar's gonna try to go aerial, and oh, fails miserably. This is exactly why you don't see him go aerial that, mu that much, that often. Now Tetsu taking advantage of the situation, and hot shots. Little Caesar back into the, into the, into the ring. Oh, we're gonna see it again. We're gonna see it again. Oh, nice oh, counter there by Little Caesar. Now Little Caesar is going to try to go again and if, if he throws this one it's going to be messed up. Oh, no. This one, he landed. He landed that double axe handle hard from the top of the turnbuckle to the thinly padded floor. Now he's going to go with that. Oh, arm wrench suplex. No bridge because the, the count up, the like, pause don't go in. It's not a pause down anywhere. So that's but the, the, as, I believe that I know his strategy. As long as I see to bring the pain and secure his victory, 
That's all that matters. But Tetsu has the same exact plan as demonstrated with that. Tossing into the apron and a spinning um, jump. Drop kick right there. Now Tetsu tosses him back into the ring because he wants to win this. Now Tetsu is the one that's going to go up to the turnbuckle and oh, landing the elbow, but no one at the pool. Now he's behind. <laughs> What did you do that, um, Little Caesar? Oh, for Lois Lamb. That's what I'm asking. Why did you, why did you uh, announce your presence to him? Now he's going to pin him. He's going to go one, two. Oh, how close was that? Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, now he lands the, the um, 26 expert. That's what he calls that, the, the signature. He's going to make him tap now. He's going to make him tap. He's seeing enough pain for him to tap. No, folks. Little Caesar did not tap to that point. He might tap to this one. Yeah, give him a fight. He's, he's going to go. Yes, he's going to go. Yes, he does. Little Caesar has tapped to the Akira effect. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a contender for the social media championship at our next big event. And his name is Tetsu Shima. Credit to credit his due, all of the five participants have full of valiant effort here. All of them wanted the prize. All of them wanted the prestige of carrying the belt in their uh, waist, but only Tetsushima was able to achieve this maximum prestige. And now he will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our current reigning defending champion, Teddy Rotsky. Ladies and gentlemen, he's your winner. Shima. Do you, Shima-san, bask in the glory of victory right now. But remember, this victory is only one half of the step to take in order to become the new social media champion. And, oh, no, no. Oh, come on. Why do we have to go through this now? No. Come on. Stop being so losers, people. Gee, and you're not even involved in this. Look at this. Look at this. Sick. Let's go to something else, shall we? Back we are to Comet Wrestling. And here comes our ever so proud and ever so cheerful Dave Champion, Mabel Madea Simmons. Perhaps you want to talk about her Mac the win and successful defense at our mega event. Perhaps you want to talk about something else. She's going to go pick up the mic and we are going to listen in the light to all the things she needs to say. Take it away, Miss Simmons. Well, Madea did say she was done talking, so does this even count as an interruption? Well, either way, it's still a rude thing for Lady Damona to do. Most likely, she wants to put her two cents regarding this announcement, so let's see what she has to say about it. Tournament of Damien's official, and it's gonna be back. We are yet again to combat wrestling. And that, my friends, is our beloved esteemed president.
John Henry Eden. Most likely here to deliver many more news regarding the future and should I say the present as well of our company Combat Wrestling as well as ensuring that everybody here is having a good time. And here comes the president, ever proud, ever approachable, ever amicable, ever the leader. Here he comes. And I'm willing to bet that uh, you guys are getting a little too tired of all these um, talking segments with so little in the way of action, but bear with us. We're just coming back. Hey, so please, just bear with us. We have so much to say. And speaking of having much to say, here comes the president to let us know the state of the union regarding our company. Please let this is the way I say. New title of bail? Wow! Whoa, both bombshell after bombshell after bombshell. Only one word to say, bravery. I love our president. Well, out goes one, in comes another. That's right, folks. Do not adjust your set. Here comes. Our current reigning defending multinational champion is a joker. Hand in hand with his incredibly irresistible yet equally insane bride, Harley Quinn. Who, as you remember, was in that triple threat for the Danes Championship and came out really short. But knowing how mercurial and ego driven the Joker is, I'm willing to bet that they're here to celebrate his retaining the multinational championship and uh who, who will blame him after all he went against one of the most promising prospects here in combat wrestling and still made a mockery out of him while retaining and that's not something that you could do to the creeper on, on a daily basis i mean yeah sure he's not as seasoned as the men coming down the aisle now but you have got to give the creeper a lot of credit for pulling his weight around with a veteran like the Joker, but in the end, it's like he always says, why so serious? You always need to take it serious when you're dealing with the Joker, because he can pull things from that bag of tricks and then some. But in the end, he always knows exactly what needs to be done to hold gold around his waist and to hold the eyes and the heart of that lovely bride of his. And you gotta say, uh, you gotta know that he might believe himself on cloud nine. But how long will this brain of his last? 
only time and tell. Right now, he wants to pick up the mic and he wants to talk to the CAW combos. Let's listen, please. Low Joker, real low. Hey, spousal abuse is never funny, you two thick schmucks. And look who came to join the celebration, folks. Joker controlling the head of the creeper and another upper cut. And here we go with another spinning Samoan drop. Mocking Mercy. Look at that. Laughing at him. Mocking, pit, mocking both him and his former mentor, Ronald. May sound like I'm breaking my oath, but reward you so much, Joker. Joker, Ronald, the multi regional championship for the next main event. Fuck God! And just as that was stepping up, now we're gonna go for the main event. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back with more action pack action. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you one and all from the bottom of our hearts for being here along with us at Combat Wrestling and welcome to the main event of the evening. A main event where the highest of stakes are really at hand. Let's hear it from the lovely Maggie Simpson. Take it away, Maggie. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and it is our main event of the evening. On the way to the ring, from Okinawa, Japan, Yamasaki. Ryuji. Various personal interests involved for that man coming on the eye of the Okinawan overlord. For one thing, he wants to make his 
rematch uh, against the current reigning defending ultimate champion of the cosmos Osman Kieran a one-on-one -on -one. and the best way to ensure that is to defeat his opponent tonight General Saad and there's something a little extra down the line that he wants to do while adding that L to the general, right? Because if the general loses, then he will not get another opportunity to get at goal as long as Osman Kirin is holding the title. So the highest of stakes are involved, both for the general and for this guy, who will want nothing more than to humiliate the general and make him eat his own word. But will he be able to succeed? Let's find out. And now for his opponent. Behold, the Emperor of the Phantom Zone, with the weight of the cosmos almost literally on his shoulders tonight. To this man, it's win or go home. And going home will be both excruciating and humiliating. And I definitely know that he's not going to aim for that. That's for damn sure. And his opponent, Rob Krypton, residing in the Phantom Zone, General Zod. To be robbed and denied of any opportunity whatsoever to buy for any championship at all here at Combat Wrestling should he lose. Or to become the third wheel, the third man competing for the most prestigious title in this industry, in this sport, in this company. If you win, it's win or go home. The stakes are set. He must do what he needs to do. And what he needs to do is win tonight. So he knows he has to pull each and every and all the stuff possible and available to achieve that goal. But even so, will be able to, will he be able to with a roadblock as big and as dangerous as Yamasaki Ruji? We will find out in just a few seconds, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, the man of the hour, General Drew Sarge. For the final time on tonight's show, everything is set on the plate, and here we go! As you can see through your monitor screens, Yamasaki Ruji takes initiative, picks up um, General Saad, and hits him with that vertical suplex. And General Saad is no small, no small man. So you know that demonstrates the power of Yamasaki Ruji, and now he's demonstrating that malice by just blatantly choking him. Now Yamasaki, oh, field goal to the shoulder, almost to the long area, and Zod retaliates with that DDT, and a soccer kick of his own, and stomping on his face for good measure. Payable to evil, I guess. Oh, nasty uh, chop to the brain of oh, Yamasaki Ruji, who oh, retaliates with that um, nearly fireman drop. Now he's going to try to drag him into the, into the corner of the turnbuckle, General Saad gets away from that. Even though he's still feeling the effects of all that assault. Now he just, you see that? Do you see the power of Zod? He just picks up Yamazaki Ruji. He's like six foot six, three fifteen, and he just tosses like a rag doll. And Yamazaki right now making him pay for that. Now, ooh, almost hit him with a low blow, but he got out of the way at a little loot test press there for good measure. To make, to, and lay now he's telling him to nail. It's a little too early for that, isn't it, General? Now, the General grabbing <laughs> um, Yamazaki by the scrub his neck, and ooh, hot shot. That's like, what, the third or the fourth of the night? Hey, ooh, elbow to the face of um, Yamazaki Ruji. Now, ooh, I thought he was going for uh, either a Oklahoma or a, or a straight up body slam, and that telegram got red. Now, oh, I think we're going to see him, folks. Is he going to do it? Yes, he is. 
Oh, guillotine drill! Guillotine drill by Yamazaki Ruji right there! And this is over for the dreams of the General Crush! No, oh, let it get through to the crown of two! And I almost saw the dreams of Zod fade away! And as you could say right there, Yamazaki Ruji is going desperate! We just started this match, mind you! Oh, back body drop by the General! Now the General picking up um, Ruji! And now he's just going to drag Ruji from the scrub of his neck. And, oh, I thought he was going to pay him by the same coin. But now this is worse. He's going to hop suplex into the slingshot. And that is pain beyond pain to your gird. But that's not enough to pin a man of the size of Ruji. Trust me on that. Now General Zod picking him up. Oh, I think we're going to see something going. Boom. Go with the press. And there you go. The Phantom Zone Express. Pentos on Express, and I think he might go for the Spinning Bullet as well. There he go, the Spinning Bullet. Actually, no, that's the leap, that's the single bound. There you go, one, two. My apologies, no, that wasn't the Spinning Bullet, that was the single bound. My deepest apologies for that, ladies and gentlemen. And my apologies to the General for all uh, miscalling his shot with his move. Now the General tossing uh, Yamazaki to the corner, and now he just tosses, look at it, tossing him like a rag, though, like he holds him. Like this small little uh, creature is done. And here we go with a oh, coast to coast DDT from the apron. And if the general wants, he could take the LB as his qualification. I mean, that's a solid way of him uh, fulfilling his goal. But Yamazaki seems to um, <laughs> uh, shatter those dreams. And maybe Yamazaki will take that advice of mine and have him disqualified and completely. Um, <laughs> void of any chance whatsoever have our most prestigious prize or any other prize here in combat wrestling but the, the general kind of figured that out and now he's going to go for something else are we going to see it? are we going to see it? yes we are kneel before Zod kneel before Zod hits connects with everything one, two and ladies and gentlemen the general is going to the mega event as the third person into a triple threat for the Combat Wrestling Ultimate Championship of the Cosmos. For as much and as hard as Yamazaki Ruji tried to make this a one-on-one -on -one between him and current champion Osman Kirin and humiliate the general in the process, General Todd's ambitions were far greater far more burning within him and led them to the victory that will make him the third wheel in the contention upcoming in the next big event. Now, General Zod will go and buy for the most prized possession. Congratulations to him. May he have as much luck and then as he did now, but that will be kind of difficult. I will tell you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your winner, General Zod. From the bottom of our collective hearts here at Combat Wrestling, we thank you for allowing us the privilege of being in your monitor screen in your home. On behalf of everyone, this is Matt Man Hoa. Hello, everybody. See you in the next one. Hey,